Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to share a new study that just revealed the top 8 global market frontrunners of herbal adaptogen based on source and their effect on athletic performance like increased muscle mass, endurance and recovery. Coincidentally, I have taken 5 found on this list for many years and continue to do so which I will discuss later in the video. So, what exactly are adaptogens? Before we delve into the study, let's set the stage. What are they exactly? Adaptogens are a group of herbs and natural substances like plants, mushrooms, that have been used for centuries in traditional medicine, particularly in Eastern cultures like Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine. They believe to help our bodies adapt to various stresses, promote balance, and restore harmony. The term adaptogen was first proposed in 1947 by a scientist from the USSR, Nikolai Lazarev, when he described herbs like Cisandro Senesis and others with adaptogenic properties. These substances have been historically recognized to improve attention, increase endurance in scenarios where fatigue is present, reduce the number of stress-related diseases and impairments in the body, improve physical stamina, strength, and energy levels, improve sexual dysfunction, restore cognitive performance that has been affected by stress, and maintain cortisol, aka the stress hormone, and other hormone levels under control. Now let's get to the list. The top worldwide adaptogens are ashwagandha, astragalus, cordyceps, ginseng, holy basil, rhodiola rosea, shisandra, and turmeric. Of these eight, I have been taking five of them for several years. They are ashwagandha, astragalus, rhodiola rosea, shisandra, and turmeric. And I have to say, they work well for me. So first, let me discuss the three I don't take and what the study has to say about them. And then I will talk about the other five and why I started taking them numerous years ago. We'll start with cordyceps. The study states the following about cordyceps. There are over 350 species of cordyceps, but only cordyceps sinensis has been officially recognized as a medicinal herb in the Chinese pharmacopoeia since 1964. It grows as a parasitic fungus on caterpillars, making it scarce and expensive. A 12-week randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study involving 30 amateur marathoners who consumed 2 grams of cordyceps sinensis daily found that cordyceps supplementation reduced heart rate during moderate intensity exercise after 8 weeks and improved aerobic performance after 12 weeks. This experimental study suggests that supplementing with cordyceps sinensis can enhance the endurance capacity of amateur marathoners. Next on the list is ginseng. For thousands of years, Eastern Asian countries have used ginseng as a traditional medicine. Panax ginseng is the most commonly utilized, known for its effectiveness in the traditional medicine to combat lifelessness and fatigue. Panax ginseng root are frequently employed to treat various ailments and its therapeutic effects have been established in cancer, diabetes, cardiac illnesses, immunological activity promotion, central nervous system function, stress relief, and antioxidant activities. In a study, researchers investigated the effects of Panax ginseng supplementation on muscular force and excitation during an eccentric-based workout, as well as its impact on delayed on-cell muscle soreness and subsequent muscle damage. The study utilized a randomized double-blind crossover design and focused highly on trained athletes. The results revealed that Panax ginseng supplementation in these athletes boosted mu muscular excitation, reduced perceived effort during eccentric base workouts, and accelerated muscle force recovery. Next on the list is holy basil. Holy basil, as known and also known as tosi, is a medicinal plant native to the eastern tropics. It has been used for thousands of years in Indian traditional medicine for its therapeutic effects. Recent studies have shown that tosi possesses numerous health properties such as anti-diabetic, antibacterial, anti-cancer, adaptogenic, and radioprotective effects. A study found that high doses of holy basil extracts improve swimming performance, suggesting potential central nervous system stimulant and anti-stress effects. It acts as an adaptogen, helping athletes adapt to training and maintain 
physiological balance. Additionally, its antioxidant properties can aid in muscle recovery after intense exercise, making it particularly beneficial for athletes. Now let's talk about the next five in the study. And I will also add why I started taking them years ago. We'll start with ashwagandha. This article stated that a human study showed that ashwagandha can improve VO2 max, muscle mass, and strength. Many people take ashwagandha to supposedly lower cortisol. However, studies are mixed on this. I specifically take it to optimize my DHEA and testosterone levels. I take 600 milligrams of ashwagandha in the evening. I never take it during the day. This is the brand I take. It's Bio Ashwagandha and it comes in a capsule. 600 milligrams every evening. The next on the list is astragalus. This new study here said supplementing with astragalus increased exercise performance and reduced fatigues in mice. It has the potential to enhance exercise training. However, there are other reasons why I started taking it. For starters, it contains two specific compounds called TA-65 and astragalocyte 4. Human studies have shown that TA-65 lends telomeres and improves markers of metabolic, bone, and cardiovascular health with not, no adverse effects, which suggests that TA65 improves health and may reduce mortality. As for astragalocyte 4, it has many health benefits, including antioxidant, cardioprotective, anti-inflammatory, antiviral, antibacterial, anti-fibrolytic, anti-diabetic, immunoregulatory effects, protecting you from many age-related diseases. It's excellent for the immune system. This is the brand I take, okay? I take 3,600 milligrams of astragalus daily. Please remember, none of these companies are sponsored, okay? This is just what I take. The next on the list, one of my favorites, Rhodiola rosea. The recent article here stated that taking Rhodiola rosea may improve the body's ability to adapt to physical exercise and reduce muscle damage caused by intense workouts. The reasons why I take it are more diverse. For starters, it induces a process called hormesis, which can extend health span and lifespan. It can also influence behaviors like memory and learning and cartilage formation. I also take it for pain reduction and recovery after workouts for enhanced explosive power. And it also makes you feel like you did not strain during an intensely, intensively vigorous workout. In other words, you felt like you didn't even work out. That's how, I, that's how it makes me feel. Those that I take, for Rhodiola rosea, by the way, this is the one I take, is 400 milligrams twice daily, once after my workout and once before I go to sleep. The next on the list is Shishandra. This article states that studies support the potential benefit of Shishandra extract supplementation in improving muscular strength. Okay, The first study focused on middle-aged women which showed enhanced muscular strength and lower lactic acid buildup, while the second study showed that all the people who participate in low intensity exercise, cisandra intake might enhance muscular and skeletal strength, but not make you bigger. That's okay with me. However, the reason why I take it is because it is a potential CERT1 activator. CERT1 activation helps you live healthier by making new mitochondria. It also contains 202 chemical compounds which shows that this adaptogen is excellent for overall health and can protect you against many age-related diseases and much more. One of my favorites also. The dosage I take for Shizandra is 500 milligrams, two capsules. I take them both in the morning. One, one gram or 1,000 milligrams in the morning. The next on the list and last is turmeric slash curcumin. The present review states that in a placebo control study, the results showed that those who took it, curcumin, had lower increase in specific markers of muscle damage and inflammation, and that curcumin can help reduce inflammation after exercise, which may lead to a faster recovery and better performance in future exercise sessions. And I have to say, I take curcumin for the exact reasons mentioned in this review, to minimize inflammation 
and to speed my recovery after workouts. However, there are other reasons why curcumin is so good for you. Curcumin can potentially prevent sarcopenia and preserve and even activate weakened fast switch muscle fibers, aka type 2A fibers that diminish as you age. That's the explosiveness. That's the fibers that help you in explosiveness. That's why I take curcumin. I mean, it's not 100% proven yet, but it can potentially. So I take it in the event it does work. But I do take it for the proven reasons that I mentioned before. I take two of these, once in the morning, once at night. Each contains 475 milligrams of curcumin extract and 20 milligrams of piperine. Make sure if you take curcumin, it has to have piperine or it's not worth taking. Twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. In conclusion, we have explored the topic of adaptogens and their significant role in enhancing athletic performance and longevity and health span. The eight adaptogens discussed in this video have gained widespread recognition and util utilization globally. As highlighted throughout this presentation, these adaptogens have been supported by extensive human studies, and I personally continue to incorporate five of them into my daily routine, reaping their beneficial effects for several years and ongoing. However, it is essential to remember that adaptogens are not limited to boosting athletic performance alone. They offer a plethora of advantages for overall health span and longevity. While these supplements can be valuable additions to support physical endeavors, they should never be seen as substitutes for a healthy lifestyle, which includes maintaining proper sleep, engaging in regular exercise, and consuming a nutritious diet. Those are very important. It is crucial to consult a medical provider before incorporating any supplements into your routine, including the adaptogens mentioned in this video. Individuals need and responses may vary and professional guidance ensures safe and effective usage. I hope you found this video informative and enlightening. As always, remember that a well-informed approach to health and fitness is essential for optimal results. Thank you for watching and I look forward to sharing more valuable insights in my future videos. Wishing you all a wonderful day ahead. See you in my next video.